Good afternoon and welcome back to the Mini Performance Workshops. Today's work is setting the tracking caster and camber on the uh, VTEC Clubby Estate. Uh, it's all been apart, it's had, what has it had? It's had a lot of changes, all the suspension arms have been off, it's had a new steering rack so all our reference points have been lost. Uh, so first job is going to get the track in somewhere round about right uh, and the first part of that is to centralise the rack and to do that and what you need to do to centralise the rack is you take off the little grommet that's on the bulkhead uh, that exposes uh, an allen key in the end in the rack and you undo that and then turn the steering so that there's a, a little hole exposed in the rack and then you drop a drill bit in to centralise the rack and that will give you uh, a straight ahead position. Apparently that Allen key is metric which is perfect logic on an old Mini. 5mm metric. metric he shouts. That's where the steering is now. So the steering centralised and you know straight away see that steering wheel's off, off kilter but that's because when the rack was out and you put it back on the splines, if it wasn't set as straight ahead, then it's a, every chance that you're going to be way off. Which it is. Which it is. Which it is. So you might ask, what is uh, the track in, toe in, toe out? So I'm going to do uh, what, what I used to call John diagram on this bit of cardboard. So when your front wheels, I like that, and that's your direction of travel. That's toe out. And obviously when they're doing that, this is massively exaggerated, don't forget. That's toe in. Uh, camber and caster. Camber is when you're looking at your front of your car, and if the wheels are like that, oops, not the best picture. Again, massively exaggerated. That is negative. No, that's plus, sorry. Wrong way around, that's plus. And then um, when your wheels are like that. That is negative camber. And then caster, I'm running out of space on a bit of cardboard, is more difficult to explain. It's influenced by the tie rod at the front of the car. And then if you can imagine your ball joints on your hub, like that, and that's your hub. That angle there, I think it, I don't know how it works, it's maybe, is it that angle or whichever. The angle between the top and the bottom ball joint is your caster. Um, and I think, it, well it's ob obviously influenced by adjusting the length of your tie bars here. So if you've got standard non-adjustable ones, it, it is what it is. Um, so what we're looking for is to all of that length and try and get round about standard caster, which I think off the top of my head without looking it up is about 4 degrees. Somewhere in that sort of ballpark, I think we said it out before and it's been all right. We're going to go negative camber, uh, 0.5 negative. We probably go more on um, smaller wheels but it's running 13s at the moment so that's what we're going to set it at and tracking uh, I can't remember what the actual figure is I think it's a tiny little bit of towing I think but I'll have to check that before I get it set but the important thing to start off with is to try and get it parallel uh, so that's you know straight ahead like so and then we just work through it but the problem is you alter the tracking it'll alter the caster and the camber is obviously uh, adjustable by the bottom arms lengthening and in the bottom arms and altering that will adjust your caster and adjusting your caster will adjust your tracking so it's a, it's a combination of working around the three of them uh, to narrow it down to the figures that you're looking for um, it's quite a time consuming process uh, and it can be a bit frustrating because you alter one thing that you thought everything was set you alter, you're tracking back to how it should be and then everything's out again so it's a case of just like 
slowly slowly creeping up on it to get the figures you're after to actually do the work these are the tools that we need we've got a tracking gauge here spirit level to keep checking that everything's nice and level although there is bubbles on it as well but you, you need to uh, keep checking it's all set up correctly what i've already done is i've done a quick calibration where you put the legs together and uh, turn the button on and see if it all lines up when when the gauge is at zero if it lines up to the center marker on that one it reflects backwards and forwards and it did and then we've got a camber plate for putting up against the side of the wheel and then a caster and camber gauge which fastens to that and we've also got some uh, string which is part of this kit which is really useful just to run around the car to give you a, a rough um, physical check before you start doing anything what we might do is run it all the way around the car and have a quick look at the tracking at the front and then uh, adjust it so it's more more or less there or thereabouts and then get the gauges on and go for the more accurate stuff after that uh, and the other thing we've got is these turn plates which are required for when you're setting the caster because you have to turn the wheels obviously left and right to see how the caster changes Right, so there's a better picture of the centering plug in the steering rack. Another top tip is to ensure with that when you're reassembling your steering rack, you put your steering rack on and then you start from the bottom of the column, not from the top. And you put the pinch bolt in first, align it with the cutout in the steering rack, put the column on, put the pinch bolt on, and then work back from there to the hanger of whatever type you have and then align your steering wheel after that not in the opposite order because you'll find you have to undo it all to redo the pinch bolt and that's a top tip from Christopher and we won't ask how we found that out so what I've done so far is a quick preliminary check <coughs> on the angles uh, visibly you can see that this side front wheel is towing out and it also has uh, it's probably hard to see on the camera but it has a touch of positive camber i.e the wheels further in at the bottom than it is at the top and then on this side you can just sort of look down it and it's not a million miles off to be honest and also the camber on this side looks a lot better so what I'll do is I'll get a quick measurement on it using the tracking gauges just to see how far out it is. It's probably off the gauge to be honest, it's that far off. And then we'll lift it up a bit further and start adjusting some stuff underneath. I'll probably start with a couple of measurements on the bottom arm on this side and the, and the track rod end compared to that side and adjust this side to match that side and then uh, put the gauges back on and have a look and see how it's sitting after that. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Right, this is the track rod end and to adjust this I need to lengthen this rod here the lock nuts are already loose so then what I do is get some grips on here and see if I can turn the rod it's in like a ball cup at this end 
and just turn it, uh, which way do I need to turn it? Probably up the hill, I think. We'll unscrew it from the track rod end. We shall lengthen the track rod. We shall push the track rod end itself that way, which means that end or that side of the wheel goes out and the front side of the wheel comes back in, which was, it was tracking out and we need to make it turn back in. So I'll have a go at that next. I won't be able to film it because I need both hands in there because I imagine it's going to be quite tight. There's a possibility I might have to take the weight off the wheel uh, to help undo it because there's quite a bit of uh, pressure on the system. And also the problem is that in these, when you put a new rack in, this is like really, really stiff to turn in the ball at this end. So it uh, could be very difficult to get it to turn. What I have done in the past is I've welded a half nut onto here and that's given me something to turn when I'm adjusting it and also the flats help you count it. It's got a bit of paint on it, which you can see there, which will help us count how far we've turned it when I start turning it. And then the bottom arms, you just uh, undo the lock nut here and adjust them on the, on the bolt end there to screw them in or out. Uh, they don't measure that much difference between the two of them, to be honest. Uh, and when you look at it, they're pretty much the same amount of thread exposed and stuff. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the tracking first and then uh, go from there after I've got that somewhere there or thereabouts. I'll have another look at the camber. Because don't forget, adjusting tracking, adjust his camber, adjust his caster and each one influences the other. So I'll just do one thing at a time and see if I can get anywhere near where I want. Yeah, as suspected, the steering rack will not move. It is that new that I can't turn it at all, so I can't adjust the tracking. So the only way around it is to get a large nut and slide it over the steering rack and weld it in place and that will give me adjustment uh, because the other way to do it is to take off the track rod end each time and turn it but you can only do full turns and when you're trying to get a fine amount of adjustment that isn't going to work so what we're doing now is we're stripping it down we've got it stripped off and then we're going to weld a nut onto here roughly in there and uh, go from there and that will enable us to turn this while still keeping it all connected which is what you need. The nut we're going to use as a matter of interest is one of the ones that used to go on here on your brakes. Uh, it's 24 mil, whatever that is in Imperial or standard if you're American. Um, so yeah, it just slides on there. There's a little bit of a slack on it, but it, Don't matter. it doesn't matter. It's going to get sorted with the welder. So all it needs to do is go on there nice and tight and then I'll be able to turn this shaft to adjust the tracking. In fact, just like that. So welders coming out next then get that welded on uh, and then it'd be a case of reassemble the track at end and then put the wheel back on and then we'll have to go around the other side and do the same over there. And then we can restart setting the tracking, hopefully.